Okay, so this question on the field of feelings practice, which I have lots of um, YouTube videos on on my YouTube channel, uh, just uh, again on how to, um, what to do with the mind when you're doing the field of feelings. So the field of feelings, uh, which is uh, sort of uh, derived, if you like, from Dr. Hawkins' letting go uh, practice, uh, is enough to, on its own, to take you to enlightenment, to fully dissolve the ego. Uh, and the thing to bear in mind with that is that uh, the one of the core, I mean, there's two aspects, if you like, to the field of feelings. One is undoing the addiction to thinking, and the other is let is allowing all repressed feelings to vanish into the infinite. Um, so uh, the core thing of um, the ego is that it, it voraciously um, is uh, it represses feelings. You know, as it, if everyone anyone's ever felt guilt or shame or fear or craving for anything, you know, or felt boredom or loneliness, whatever it is that may arise. I mean, the ego is hardwired to escape that feeling through doing something so that it's repressed. So it brings in um, accumulated repressed feelings over a lifetime of the ego just being allowed to do what it wants to do. So it's like, imagine feeling sad and then eating an ice cream, or imagine feeling lonely and putting a movie on. Um, Im imagine feeling lonely and calling up uh, that special person uh, to get some comfort. Uh, or um, it could be, or just going for a run, or it could be uh, smoking, or it could be whatever it is to not experience um, something coming up that doesn't want to be experienced. So the ego quickly does something. It also does what I call doing, doingness. I'll continue to be doing so that I don't just be still and allow everything to arise without re repressing it, suppressing it, or trying to escape it until it's all that hot air, if you like, the repressed guilt, shame, fear, loneliness, everything in there is just allowed to come up and dissolve into nothingness. So that is so powerful a practice that it would be stronger, it would be good enough, combined with simultaneously letting go of the addiction to thought. So you're really tackling the ego head on in this practice of um, feeling the feelings, which is what I label it. So the practice is sit and, uh, and, and especially sit if there's something there that the ego wants to escape with by thinking, by talking to somebody, by putting the TV on, by eating ice cream, by calling up your favorite friend, uh, or going for a run, whatever it is, uh, picking up a cigarette, um, having a glass of alcohol, um, putting the TV on. Yeah, there's so many, you know, buy, buying the next object, uh, shopping thing, whatever it is. So you resist that. Uh, and then even more feelings will come up because the ego will get angry that you're not using its favorite repression mechanism or addictive mechanism to escape that feeling. Uh, so just let that come up. And as soon as that happens uh, and you have that willingness, um, the inspiration to be with whatever is coming. And that's also equally the same for physical illness, uh, you know, to escape the pain or whatever it is uh, or breathlessness that's coming up. So just be with it and allow it to come up and even just uh, let go of all seemingly unconscious resistance to not letting it come up. So it's everything is allowed to just come up in full awareness. It, it could be lots of sadness would come up, tears, pain. Um, there'll be, of course, the ego fight that, but you just keep doing it, it gets easier and easier. And then what, what to do with the thoughts? So immediately the last thing the ego will want to get away with is being in thoughts, which is a resistance to the now, just to identify with thoughts, because you're not going to do the bigger, the, the big things, which are like eating ice cream, alcohol, calling your friend up, going for a run or having a cigarette or whatever it is, or put the TV on. So you're not going to do those. So the ego is now left and you're not allowed to repress your feelings by trying to push them down again. So the last thing your ego will try to do to resist experiencing what's coming up is identifying with thoughts 
uh, as an addictive mechanism to stop everything just being released and just <clears throat> have the entertainment of the addiction to thoughts running through. So how do you do the practice now that you're not escaping into ice cream, shopping, addiction, or whatever it is, calling a friend, going for a run, whatever it is, um, now you're not doing any of those things. And you're also undoing the ego mechanism of um, any unconscious mechanism of trying to repress or push down anything that's coming up, any feelings, pains, aches, grief, sadness, tiredness, shame. Um, now you're letting all of that arise uh, and undoing or praying for the Holy Spirit to undo all blocks, to let everything be released. For some, if you're an addict, it'll be like a volcano of whatever it is, shame, guilt, pain, will just uh, come explode into, can be quite, uh, uh, you know, can, can be if you're an addict, like panic attacks uh, and, and feeling like you're going to die. And that's, that's quite normal if you're an addict, but just go allow that to also happen because it's your ego that's dying. Now, what about the thoughts? The last defense of the ego then will try to think at 100 miles an hour. Uh, and, and thereby resist the undoing of all the ego mechanisms, the last, uh, the last uh, stronghold of the ego. So it'll be like, well, I don't want to feel this fear, or I don't want to feel this pain, I just want an ice cream. Um, you can't do that now, you've got to call your, you've got to call your friend up. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be trying to like, it'll be trying to sort of give you special thoughts, or it'll say something, if, if it's a lot of stuff coming up, it'll say something, you're going to die, you just can't feel this thing. Uh, you mustn't feel this thing, you, you, you lose everything, you'll go insane or you'll go mad or you'll just, you'll just drop down dead if you allow this to carry on. So it'll have all kinds of thoughts will start to now because you've sort of got the ego by the jugular. Uh, so what, what happens now is the ego, these thoughts are just, you know, uh, they may be going at 100 miles an hour trying to tell you to do this, that and the other or just to um, stop the practice. So you... Um, so here's the practice, here's the thing, the thoughts. So uh, when you start this practice of feeling the feelings, you're just allowing all feelings, all repressed and suppressed stuff to come in. Don't scrunch your body. Uh, your ego is not required. No monitor or background supervisor or thinker is required. Um, so just drop that. Um, thinking is not required for this, uh, for this practice. So... I just know, so how do you do it? let that go? Remember, you are, as soon as the thought arises, you have the, you can pray, you can pray before you start the practice that you drop, you know, you pray for divine aid to not pick up any thought or to let it go as soon as the thought arises in mind. So what you'll find in the beginning is that you'll, you'll see how severe the addiction to thinking is because you won't even be, a, you'll be thinking for about, you know, you're going to do it for 10 minutes. You'll have been thinking about, whatever for about five minutes before you remember you weren't supposed to be thinking <laughs> that's how bad your addiction to thinking is you know it won't even let you get there to like you're not supposed to be thinking but that's normal okay so day one it took you five minutes to remember that you weren't supposed to be you're supposed to be dropping the thoughts as soon as they arise day two just do it again uh, do the daily practice uh, you, and the intention is to feel but not to think so then what is because of that intention to, to grace, to God, to the Holy Spirit, to, to, to be holy means not to be in separation, not to be identified with the separate self. That's what to be holy, to be in oneness, to be free of all limitation, identifying with anything that's limited. That includes thoughts and, and repressed feelings arising in consciousness. So the next uh, the, the thing is, uh, so what's happening with this? daily intention to just allow everything to come up and simultaneously let go of the addiction to thought the next day it'll be there'll be greater willingness and it's like you will catch you know you might only be thinking and in the story of the drama of whatever today's drama is of your thoughts um, but you'll catch it quicker you'll catch it within like 30 seconds that you that like you have to drop the thoughts and just feel and be with what is. You're just essentially being with isness without trying to repress feelings and identify with personal thoughts. So, uh, so the next time, uh, so, and um, so 
you, the next time it'll be you're doing the practice and it'll only be a few seconds you're into the thought I, I've left the I've left the cooker up, and then you'll drop it and then and then you'll be feeling the fear coming up for example and then another thought will come up oh I need to plan for tomorrow drop it drop the thought and then you're back to feeling so you're getting better now it's like you're reversing the addiction to spending your time just being empty and allowing the repressed feelings to come up and spending less time in the thoughts, catching it quicker. It's not you that catches it, if you like, it's the infinite, that, uh, that intention of the infinite aids you and the thought is dropped. So the story, whatever that the today's story is, is dropped faster. And with that continued intention, then um, as the thought arises, there's such an intensity, if you like, of higher mind um, to, as you catch it, you, you start to be able to catch the emergence of a thought. Now that's pretty far down the line because most people are just hardwired to the addiction of the thought. So it's like suddenly you just you become one with the fear and you're just allowing it to come up and allowing it to be there. And it's almost like there, there starts to be a oneness with it, a resonance with it, and it starts to evaporate. And then it seems like a thought wants to emerge uh, and say like, um, you need to call your friend later on. Let's think about the friend. Uh, and, then, and then you realize that a thought has emerged and the ego is trying to grab attention and go into a hypnosis of that story. And you catch it quicker and you drop it. And then back to being one with the fear. And this, this uh, you could call it one pointedness of mind or this mindfulness or this inner practice, which doesn't come from the ego mind because the ego mind would never come up with this idea. Uh, because it's actually anti, it's, an, it's anti the infinite, and so we resist that. So that's the practice. Now, um, what one then starts to see is that there comes a vigilance in the field of human practice to, um, uh, to not pick up thoughts, and this becomes a thing whereby it's almost like, um, and the observer, if you're doing the observer practice simultaneously, it's like in that which witnesses thoughts, there's an inner silence, which is prior to being addicted to the entertainment of the thinking. So it's more like the awareness after the repressed feelings, because when those are coming up, those are pretty uh, high. Uh, you're not really wanting to identify, but the thinkingness which passes like a TV set is actually, forget that. You don't want to be like in the entertainment of the, of the TV or the thinkingness. There's an inner place, if you like, or a prior place or a deeper place, which is free of thoughts. And it's uh, and sometimes a thought wants to emerge, seeming to want to emerge from that, but you just drop that. OK, um, so I'll stop there. But, um, you know, if you do it every day, the, the practice, uh, you'll start to make great progress and there'll be a great inner joy and delight that the, the mechanism of addiction to thinking, the mechanisms of repressing feelings and being distracted into thinking, actions, activities, and gross addictions, alcohol, drugs, TV, whatever it is, dependency on people, uh, will start to evaporate. And, then, and there'll be um, a, start, a greater expansiveness will come. Okay, I'll stop that video, this video now.